Hello there. I hope that you all are doing great over there at home. I have been asking this question to you many times whenever I'm there in front of you on screen, right? Because we are concerned about you. Because of that only we have brought you these virtual classes and we want you to just sit tight and watch all the programs because you'll be getting benefited from all those. Okay, so as you could see on board that today I'm going to deal with the topic called vocabulary and it's mainly for class 8. For that, I need you to take up your pen, a notepad or whatever you have right now to record all those which I'll be telling you or teaching you, I don't want you to miss them. And if you don't have time also, if you're running short of, so what you have to do is take up your mobile phone, just take the snaps, and then you can learn all those words which I'll be dealing with today. So here we go. Vocabulary. We have to find out, or we have to know actually the meaning and the definition of vocabulary. Uh, I usually alphabetize and explain collection of words or the collection of words a person knows and uses is called vocabulary. Okay, I'll make it more simple. What is actually vocabulary? You would say in another word is called words. Words. Whatever words you have, those are actually vocabularies. And the way you are using those words in your sentences, those are vocabularies. And the thing is that it's more important whenever you are speaking, whenever you are speaking, you have to make sure of that, that which word is actually suitable or appropriate for that particular sentence. So you have to keep that in your mind. I have taught you many things about homonym and confusing words, pronunciation. See, all those actually, the classes which you must have seen and watched, those were actually related to this one also, the vocabularies. The thing is that, one more thing that I just want to add up over here is, whenever you speak, make sure that you are using new words. There are plenty of words in English, plenty, plenty of them. But you forget them. Whenever you are speaking, whenever you are writing also, at that time you'll forget that this word could be written there. Or, uh, such words could be used over there. I know it. Many a times we are having such problems. We will be immeasurable whenever we are talking to someone or writing something, maybe in the form of letter or paragraph writing or essay writing, we usually forget. So in order to keep that in your mind fresh, what you have to do is you have to speak and you have to use all those words which you must have come across before, but you must have forgotten also to use them, okay? So in such things, vocabulary is important. Let's move on to the next one. Actually, the slides, which I'll be telling you those words, actually. That is one of the words, flabbergasted, okay? It pronounced flabbergasted, flabbergasted. You know the meaning of that one? It's quite simple. To overwhelm with bewilderment or astonish, amaze. Whenever you are amazed, whenever you are surprised, you have to say like this, you know, I am flabbergasted to see that, that uh, you have won the match today. I am flabbergasted. I did not expect this. Such kind of, you know, words could be used. But sometimes we won't be using them because we must have forgotten them or sometimes we don't actually know them, all those words, okay? So these are such terms over there that you could use. Use them in writing, use them in speaking. So that is the word for you, flabbergasted. Whenever you are amazed, whenever you are astonished or surprised or bewildered or in shock, I would say, that time you could say this word by saying this, I am flabbergasted to see you performing like this. Okay? So I hope that you are using that particular term over there. See, it's quite simple, but the thing is that you were not aware of this word. Okay? More to the next word. Toddler. Toddler. T O 
D-D-L-E-R, toddler. You know the meaning of that? A young human being who has started walking, but not fully mastered it. We usually call that particular young human being as a child or infant, or typically uh, between ages one to three. Okay, those kids who are not able to walk, they, those kids are called toddler also. In spite of saying kids, infant, or child, you could use this term, toddler, okay? Toddler. So I hope that you are going to use this word also over there in your sentences. And I think most of you have come across this word also, but the thing is that whenever we are talking and whenever we are writing something, we usually forget all these terms. So you have to make sure of that, that whenever you're speaking, take a pause whenever you speak or think of something. As the other day I was like, uh, for the class ninth, I was asking the students and I was telling them also, whenever you are speaking, you have to be uh, conscious about what you're speaking. One, one more thing also is there, in what language do you think, actually? That was my question. When I was dealing with class ninth, with the tenses and all, I was telling the students and I was asking them also that uh, in what language do they think? Okay, because most of us, we usually think in our own mother tongue, a language. It could be Hindi, it could be Marathi, it could be Tamil, etc. Okay, so it's quite difficult for you, but it's not impossible. So you have to start thinking. In which language? In English. You've got to do it. Whenever you do it, definitely you will know how to frame sentences. Okay, so keep that in your mind that whenever you are thinking, you must think in English. In order to speak, good. In, in order to speak, uh, amazing English. Okay, move on to the next word, grocery. Yeah, grocery. What is it, by the way? It's a shop, store, where you will find all these household supplies or household items. But what do we say, you know? I'm going to the shop to buy a packet of salt. I'm going to buy a, a kilo of sugar. We used to say that shop. But see, I mean, like, don't you find it a cliche? You know what is cliche? A cliche is something that is repeated. It becomes silly. It becomes a fun type of thing. It's called cliche. Okay, let me just write it for you. This is the spelling of cliche. Okay. Uh, cliche is actually the meaning of that is whenever you are repeating the same thing, repeating the same thing accidentally, that becomes a cliche. Like for example, we used to ask a person whenever we meet them. We don't, we, we don't usually ask them, how are you? Okay? That could be the secondary. Whenever you are meeting a person, you won't just immediately ask him, how are you? You won't ask that. Then how you'll ask him, you know that in your language? Khana khaliya. <laughs> Have you taken your food? That is the first thing that comes to us whenever we are meeting someone. Don't you think so? Yes, we do that. As if you are going to, I mean like, you know, uh, treat that person as you're going to provide him food, as you're going to feed him. Okay, that is actually a normal way of greeting a person to start the talk, right? Whenever we want to talk to a person, we usually ask like this, because we don't have anything to talk about. So it usually starts like this. Have you taken your food? Have you eaten? Okay, so that those particular terms are actually cliche, cliche. Why I was telling you that, because uh, that thing which is there on your screen right now, grocery, grocery is actually, the name for that particular store or shop where you will find all these household supplies, okay? Whenever you have to go to the shop to buy all these household supplies like uh, eatable things or those materials that have been used or that are supposed to be used over there at home. So for such thing, for such shop, for such store, it's called grocery, okay? But we don't do that, we don't use it. Hardly we use that. Don't you think so? Yes, it is. We don't use them. The reason is that because we are okay with all this word that which we are knowing. 
But remember, I told you one thing about uh, the parts of speech in the beginning. If you have watched one of my videos, which was, uh, which was on air much before, it was something about this, something about actually the term. What was the term? That how you have to actually avoid such words by using them rep repeatedly. Okay, there are so many words as we have been doing it. I mean, like as we have been using them regularly and you must have forgotten all those words. Just because of that, you are not having those vocabularies. Vocabularies are actually important here because it adds something to the sentences. Okay, let's move on to the next word. Petrochal. What is it? It's petrochal. Petrochal. B-E-T-R-O-T-H-A-L. Petrochal. Okay, and the meaning of that is there. A mutual promise, engagement, or contract for a future marriage between a man and a woman. Okay, we, we call that sagai in Hindi, uh, engagement. Whenever a man is promising a woman to be his wedded husband or to be a wedded wife with a particular person, that ceremony is called betrothal, okay? We used to say engagement. I have to go and attend, attend someone, someone's engagement today, engagement ceremony. So despite saying that one, you could use this term, the betrothal ceremony. I have to attend a betrothal ceremony, okay? Uh, you cannot say a function also. It's not a function, a betrothal function or something like that because function is something different. Okay, so this one, the term betrothal is actually for a man and a woman who promise to marry each other, mar marry each other in the future. So for that particular purpose, they get together, they'll have that ceremony, the betrothal ceremony, and then that for sure that, that they're going to get married, right? Okay, the next word on your screen right now is craving. You know the meaning of that? The meaning of that is a strong desire or yearning, okay? Now, let me tell you one thing. These words are there in your books. If you read those books, which you are having right now with you, you'll find all these words, but the thing is that you have never opened them. Or you, you were not having the time to open them and all that. You never had the time to open all those. But actually, uh, seriously, if you are keen to learn, if you are keen to speak English, then uh, you have to do all those, okay? As I told you that you have to think in English whenever you are speaking, or whenever you are thinking of something, maybe you, you must have thought in your language so far. So what you got to do over here is, you must think in English, okay? And uh, you are having books, a lot of book, books you are having there at home. So for that, just you need to open them, just make, the books as your friends. And then you'll find out all those words over there and see, you're gonna be completely amazed, flabbergasted whenever you see them, whenever you understand actually that, uh, what are the words for them and how you're going to use them in the sentences, okay? So craving, whenever I am having a desire to eat something, for example, I love mangoes, I just wanna eat. I wanna have mangoes right now at this moment this instance. So how I will use that particular term over there in my sentence. I am craving for mangoes, okay? I'm craving for ice creams. I, I want to have it right now. So a strong desire or yearning is called craving and is there in your book. You could find that out. That's the word. Some to us. S-U-M-P T U O U S, some to us. Some to us. And the meaning of that is something that is quite expensive, grand, luxurious, and impressive. For example, you would say amazing thing. Or say excellent, magnificent, splendid, fabulous, fantabulous. All those words, okay? For that particular term, you could use also. Use also. Like you could say, it's some to us that you are here. This watch is so sumptuous 
that I really love it. I like it. Okay? So such words are missing. Why? Because we don't use them and we were not aware of them just because of that. Such beautiful words, strong words, we are not using. Such thing is vocabulary. You have your vocabulary, you will be able to communicate, converse with some people, and then you will be able to write also. Okay? Your reading skills will be improved. Writing skills will be improved as well as your speaking skills. Your spoken will be improved too. The next sentence, or the next word, B-I-Z-A-R-R-E -E, or B-I-Z-A-R-R-E. -R -E. Actually, uh, the pronunciation of Z is Z in some of the countries. Okay, I, I'm not asking you to follow me, but I'm just like uh, trying to tell you actually that uh, that could be the pronunciation of Z also as Z, okay? Uh, this American people, they pronounce this term as Z, okay? So you don't have to do that anyway, but I'm just like telling you, just a piece of information that I'm telling you, okay? So B-I-Z-A-R-R-E, -R -R -E. and how you'll pronounce that word? Now you are getting the meaning of that. Strangely unconventional in style or appearance. Whenever you see something strange or something unconventional in style or appearance, that's called B-I-Z-A-R-R-E. Bizarre. That is the pronunciation of that one. Bizarre. Bizarre. Okay. It's, I mean like, it's an animal which is completely bizarre. The animal is having that uh, strange look, or strange animal it is. I think so you have, uh, if you are watching NGO, that's, that is National Geographic Channel or some of the Discovery Channels and all that, uh, this program is there also, one of the programs that's called Bizarre Animals, okay, Bizarre Animals, or Bizarre Creatures, uh, those different types of uh, animals, insects, or creatures which are completely different, which you must have not seen before. Such show, they are actually, you know, showing over there on TV. In the NGO, there's a National Geographic Channel and Discovery, okay, bizarre. Okay, so that particular pronunciation, bizarre. Okay, it's not bizarre, eh, or bizarre, or something like that, okay. Okay, so I want to tell you something about a word that I'm going to write on board right now. Uh, you have to pronounce this word for me, okay? Uh, this is the word that you must have uh, come across of this one, all of you. I just want you to pronounce this one. It's what? Bicycle or bicycle, okay? Uh, you may think that uh, the pronunciation for that one would be bicycle, you know, because here, if cycle alone is a word and having the pronunciation of cycle, so this could be a bicycle. But we are wrong and you are wrong too. Actually, this is not the correct pronunciation of it. Whenever you say bicycle, cycle is okay. Okay, that's the rule. Uh, if you say cycle, that's okay. That's appropriate. But if you say bicycle, that could be wrong, entirely wrong. Okay? and. Uh, it's not good to use that. So in spite of saying bicycle, you have to say bicycle. Okay, it, it's bicycle. Okay, that was just true. Uh, it just came to my mind, that's why I just told you this one. It's bicycle. Okay, the next word. Those are actually the use of very. We have been using very many times whenever we are talking. I'm very good. I'm very well. Very good morning. Uh, see, I mean like it's not incorrect to use very, but it becomes a cliche whenever you use them every time. As I told you the meaning of cliche whenever you are repeatedly using something and it becomes a, a silly thing, a joke, a comedy or something like that. So you have to avoid such words whenever you're using. Try to use them once. Okay, you got to use them once in your sentences or at least two at the max, but not all the time. We used to say good morning. Uh, I don't think so that you have to say very good morning. Good morning is enough. You don't need to say 
very good morning because it's morning and it's understood that it's morning and you just have to say good morning to with somebody good evening not very good evening in reply to that in response to that you just have to say good evening good evening too otherwise you could say likewise okay but not very good morning or very good evening or very good afternoon because it sounds cliche it sounds uh, silly so you have to be careful you can use them once but not all the time all right so there are plenty of words over there on screen right now very eager very dry very happy very valuable very tasty very angry very ugly okay and very strange very hungry very tired very hard isn't it those are the word we use them whenever we have to communicate in english we use all those word whenever we are uh, talking to someone in hindi also we use such words very thank you now tell me does it sounds good to you very thank you it doesn't sounds good right very much i like him very much okay so despite of saying using very for very eager you could use keen i am keen to know that where you have learned to play piano it's one of the examples okay i am keen to know that where you have learned to play guitar keen you cannot say i am very keen to know because that will again you know inappropriate and it will look silly i mean like whenever you're talking so you 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 shouldn't be using very i'm very keen to know okay in spite of saying you remove that keen and then just say remove that very and just say keen i am keen to know i am keen to learn okay but if you are saying very eager that is also fine okay no problem i'm not saying that you have to completely uh, uh, avoid that in the sense like you can use them once but uh, whenever you're using such words every time in your sentences and all that that will make your language you know weak it will be you know kind of a language that you have not at all spoken before the next word very dry and in spite of saying very dry you would say parched it's parched just because of that i'm thirsty you could use that in that particular sentence also parch means whenever it's hot or something it's dry just because of that you are feeling more thirsty you want to drink water you want to drink some water okay so in spite of saying that it's parch because of that i'm feeling thirsty okay the next one very happy i'm very happy today that i have won the match i'm very happy today that i have got through in my examination in spite of saying very happy you would say jubilant i'm jubilant that i have won the match today okay you could use those particular term in spite of using very the next word very valuable in spite of saying that you would say precious this ornament or this jewelry is precious i need to buy it okay and otherwise you could use some some of the example like this uh, this ornament was given by my grandmother and it's precious in spite of saying very valuable you could use very valuable but the thing is that if you use them all the time it becomes a common a common word okay uh, more to the next one very tasty in spite of me saying very tasty you could say delicious this food is delicious i like this food i like this biryani it's delicious how you have made this today okay in spite of saying very tasty because it sounds a little bit dull okay whenever you're using very the same thing with very angry in spite of saying very angry my father is very angry because uh, i have taken his car in spite of saying that you, just, you could say my father is furious today because i have taken his car without his permission so you could use that the next word very ugly that means hideous i mean like in spite of saying very ugly you would say hideous see your statement is hideous just because of that i want you not to do it again i'll i'll just like give make it more simple your statement is very ugly i don't want to hear it what you have said it's wrong in spite of saying like this uh, your statement is hideous 
I don't like it, please don't say it again. You could use that one, okay? Move on to the next word. Very strange. It's very strange. In spite of saying very strange, you would say peculiar. It's peculiar to see the weather is changing. It's peculiar to see the environment. Okay, you could use that. It's strange to see the climate change. For example, you could use that word, okay? So in spite of saying very strange, you could use peculiar. Okay, move on to the next one, very much. I like you very much. You could replace that by saying, I extremely like you. I extremely like you, okay? In spite of saying very much, you could say extremely. Very hungry. I'm very hungry. I want to eat something. I'm famished. I need to eat something. Give me something, please. I need it right now. Seriously. I'm famished. I need to eat. Okay. The next word, very tired. Whenever you're tired of doing your work and you're out for office and then you came back home and then you uh, see everyone is actually, you know, not at all waiting for you, not, not at all waited for you and they had uh, so on. I mean, like so many things are over there. Very tired. What is the meaning of very tired? I mean, like in replacement of very tired, you would say, I'm exhausted. Please don't make noise. I'm exhausted. Please don't make noise. The next word, very hard. It's very hard to speak English. Is it? In spite of saying very hard, you would say, it's tough to speak English. It's not tough to speak English until you try it. So please, keep on trying. Think in English. Okay, so in that particular uh, thing, very hard, you could use tough. Okay, it's tough to see you doing like this. For example, you could use that. Okay, the next word, very bad. In spite of saying very bad, you would say severe. Okay, it's very bad that this is happening. It's just bad to see this happening, you would say otherwise like this. Okay, it's severe right now. It's in severe condition, it's in bad condition, it's a very bad condition, you would say. Uh, so students, you must have understood and you must have learned today that what all I was trying to meant with that so-called vocabulary. So please, I'm requesting you all, whenever you are there at home, whenever you are also outside, please speak in English, all right? I know it's not our language, but we are trying. And how you have to do that? You have to speak with someone who knows English or who don't know also, no problem. You can speak to your family members or your brother or sisters or your parents, etc. Okay, but you have to do it. And before that, I was telling that, that you just have to think in English also. Okay, so now avoid using those repeated words, the cliche words and all, because it makes it awkward, your sentence, whenever you're speaking. Keep that in your mind and keep reading books. All right, that will help you a lot in learning English, the language. Okay, so till then, I'm calling it a day today. So I just want you to be safe at home, keep the social distancing and wear the mask always. Hashtag stay safe, stay home, God bless.